Now into picks and bands, the Rumbles will be focused towards that top lane. And the Lulu to start off from the side of AHQ Esports Club. And once again, the Twisted Fate going to get is. banned away from Westor. It is his signature champion, and he saw some success earlier on in the tournament as well. Still definitely adept on that one, so getting rid of it. LeBlanc going to leave Bjergsen's hands as well. So there is a bit of mid-focus here with the second two bands. Um, one thing that's different about TSM than a lot of the other teams here is that Urgot is also high priority for them. However, it's a high priority for Bjergsen. Turtle does not oh. really like the champion as much. Uh, I still think that they might first pick it away on blue side since it's been picked away from them in both of their previous games yesterday. And it's still up at the moment. But with the Zed ban, maybe not because Urgot is actually very good into Zed. That matchup has something we have seen before and also players try to stay away from because of that matchup. Yeah. Zed does get banned out with the Sivir and we are going to see what is the priority here for Team Solo mid. And it is going to be the Callista for Wild Turtle. So leaving Urgot available and taking away the Callista instead this time. We'll see yeah. whether that is going to work out. Of course, Wild Turtle did play that champion. It didn't work out for him necessarily as well in the previous game, but he has shown fantastic prowess there and Mountain this is his power pick. This is huge. If he doesn't get Rek'Sai, he picks Jarvan, champion that's fallen way out of the meta, but Rek'Sai, she's way up there. Yeah, this is a guy who really utilized the Rek'Sai's early game power, whereas Santorin really fumbled it. So it's not really that big of a take away from TSM, but it right. is a really good champion for a Mountain to be on. Now, Santorin, they can just leave their jungle pick to whenever they want. He right. can have the Gragas or the Sejuani, you know, choose his flavor, whether he wants a little bit more early game impact, whether he's going to need that disengage or not, um, or whether they want that AOE stun for the team fights to set up Kalista. And does TSM now go with the support and jungle pick, though? Do they pick them away so that they can make sure that they fill out their solo lanes towards the very end of this draft, try and hold on to as much surprise as they can? See, yeah, exactly. HQ can hold on to one counter pick, uh, but TSM don't have to give away too much right now. If I was right. going to do something, I would probably grab Les Boy's Thresh. Um, yeah. They act, Albus actually Whoa. had a very good Thresh game. Okay, so they don't want to give anything away. They're trying to hide their <laughs> But we didn't notice the fact that Hecarim wasn't banned. Only one uh, counter pick here. Hecarim is a big deal at the moment on this patch as yep. well, so the horse able to run rampant through this game in the hands of Dyrus. He didn't see too well, much success in the last time that he, he played it. He rampaged right through all the minions in his wave and shoved well, up and got ganked. If we talk <laughs> about success, this is almost the same team we see TSM took against SKT. That was a 0-7-3 Callista. This almost didn't work out for him, so it's interesting to see they want to fall back onto this for their first game in day two. All power picks here so uh, yeah, far right, for right. TSM. If you look at the ranking of these champions, all would be in the top tier. Uh, and since they did not go with the Thresh, uh, it will go over. It'll probably lock that in for Albus. He had an amazing Thresh game. Yeah. Healing very well for Anne. And also breaking up the Thresh Callista uh, is definitely advisable. And I love Santorin on this Gragas as well. I mean, he does play, did play a lot of Lee Sin. We mentioned earlier on the fact that Gragas' playstyle very much like a tanky Lee Sin. Like Lee Sin sort of bulked up a little bit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Able to knock people out of the team. He's He's in the past, he's in the North American LCS, he's been a great Gragas. Well, uh, yeah, well, that, that's that. the thing as well. Like, But coming from that sort of background at the same time, and now he's on this champion, will look a whole lot more comfortable yeah. on this instead of the other. There's a lot more junglers here that are ready to put their foot down first and react to see what Santorin yeah. does. And now Santorin's the one who has to follow in the footsteps of that first gank of what, you know, the other team is doing. Now we see the Cho'Gath possibly for Bjergsen in mid lane. Whoa. That was locked in previously as well for him before. And we were saying, guys, taking away that Thresh from the Callista, but it was not. It was chosen. The Nautilus. The Nautilus, right. The huge pick away. Uh, HQ, have used this. <laughs> HQ have used the Nautilus to get here to MSI. Um, Albus was able to set up a lot of plays in the bottom lane. Yeah. And we talked about bottom lane being a big focus for Mountain. Nautilus is great, can add a bunch of damage, can initiate as well. Yeah. Also good at setting up ganks for Mount in the bottom lane. So there very well could be still a lot of focus for the bottom lane in action down there. But the thing is that something very curious about um, some of the North American teams like TSM is that they've found a lot of success with the uh, in scrims with the Thresh into the Nautilus lane down bottom. While it's not intuitive, it's not necessarily right. champion kit uh, mismatch there just for the laning phase. The fact that, that the Lantern brings so much to the combo down bottom with the Callista, there's so much mobility here, and you can pick and choose your fights very easily, especially if you have a mobile jungler like Gragas. 
it's very easy to set up kills with this combo. Now, looking at AHQ, what can fit in with the rest of this composition? You got a bit of early game jungle, but everybody needs time to ramp up. What do they finalize with? Fizz. Right? <laughs> you just want to see Westor Fizz again. <laughs> like, yes, Fizz, always the answer. I well, see Westor, when, it's Fizz. When ah! Fizz, it's gonna happen, ladies. It's, it's what happens when it's not the obvious pick. When Twisted Fate and Zed are bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Westor just said, well, my Fizz is up, guys. <laughs> gonna have to pick it away. Of course, he does play Cup. He All does right. play a whole lot of other champions, but yeah. his Fizz and, is open. And even though they let this, um, you know, last pick go through for uh, Westor to get the counter pick, this was calculated for TSM early picking the Cho'Gath because they banned out the two most likely other two options for Westor. High percentage chance that he was going to go for this. Not an unexpected turn of events here for TSM. Uh, and Bjergsen in that melee matchup should be able to... The silence is just so good against any Assassin, uh, but if you time it right, you can get your combo off and stuff Fizz. We'll see if the uh, jungler intervention turns it, though. The thing that I really like about this comp coming through from TSM is the fact that it looks on paper like it's a whole lot of tanky guys and Wild Turtle here on the Callista on the squishy carry that's yeah. supposed to do all the damage. Hecarim does a heck of a lot of damage. This is Teleport Ignite. Hecarim going to have that early Trinity Force as well. He's going to be able to really chunk down anyone, although there is a really tanky lineup coming through from AHQ, but there's a lot of damage on the support cast here from TSM. And with everything, and the champions loaded in now. Make sure you head over to Twitter and vote with your predictions at LOL Esports with the hashtag TSM win or the hashtag AHQ win. We'll add up the results and see what you think throughout the game. Bobby, I know you had something to say at the end of Champion Select. Right, I want to tag in on that uh, Hecarim point. The Hecarim was picked so early. There's a lot of point and click on HQ with the Urgot, with the Maokai, where if the flank from Dyrus does come in with the Home Guard, uh, you just one of those abilities just tag him very quickly. It's very disorienting. Takes away your big speed bonus, which also is your damage bonus. Uh, so AHQ, F, as long as they have their wits about them, uh, they do have countermeasures for the Hecarim. We'll see if Dyrus can have a good showing here at MSI. He's had a very slow start, uh, but plenty of time to look over and prepare for some attention. Switching as well to these more carry top laners, we saw Scion, Lulu, and Maokai a lot to the NALCS, and now towards Hacker Room, trying to make an impact from that top lane. Right, and when we talk about the top lane, um, I want to take a moment here, before all the explosions start, since we had almost no time last game, uh, to talk a little bit about strategy and a little bit about the state of the game, specifically for lane swaps. Uh, as we've seen a, a trend emerge in North America where Level one support movement, extremely important. Lustboy really leading the charge here. Lustboy and Lemon Nation trending towards right. level one invades. And I love this strategy so much because in the early stages of the game, there are three playmakers. There are the jungler, the top lane teleport, and to a lesser extent, the support. So if you can invade level one with your support and harass the enemy jungler and top laner, it completely destroys their early game playmaking potential if you can get them behind. And that's exactly what you want to do against AHQ, is try and take the teeth away from them in the early game. But uh, it just looks like it's going to be a fairly safe start here for Rek'Sai up on the top side. Uh, whenever you're thinking about jungle pass and jungle starts, you always want to stay one step ahead of the curve. Uh, and starting on a small side camp, much safer than starting on a, off on a buff. So both of the jugglers doing that. And it looks like we will, as long as people just go to lanes, have the uh, lane swap that they are looking for. And TSM looking for this lane swap where you mentioned earlier on the fact that Callista and Thresh, it's a quite a decent duo lane even up against the Ogre. Yes, definitely. Uh, Callista, Thresh, always a very, very strong. Yeah, well, that's the thing. A lot of the AD carries. Uh, if you talk to now, it's extremely difficult to get into that matchup. And Dyrus on a uh, one versus two has been the target of a lot of early dives. So right. Mountain starting off on the top side of the map. He will end his route towards Dyrus' area. And that's definitely something that Dyrus will have to prepare for. You know, some early wards over that wall uh, to keep some vision into the tri bush. But you see, Dyrus is now on the bottom side of the map, and that's yeah. where Santorin generally ganks. And, but and this is the weak side. Santorin started right. his strong side, but Mount started the weak side jungle. So he's trying to go cross map for the jungle here, and they've got the support coming in level one. There it is, but it's a little bit too slow. 
Now they don't steal the buff. Taking away both those small monsters yeah. from the red buff camp is half of the experience and gold that you're getting out of that camp. So it doesn't look like it was an effective invade, but they took away half of that camp, basically. Right. It's first move. First move made by AHQ. It's still hanging out in the jungle, knowing the pathing and that knowledge of Santorin and, and Dyrus now to the top side allows him to go hard with the team in the bottom if they decide to even stay and get this pushed in so they can get back and then back to another lane if they decide. Yeah, that's that's the thing. That's why a lot of us became junglers is working <laughs> off the working off the working off the mind games and the expected behavior of your opponent. That's what it's all about in the early stages of the game. Yeah. Uh, Darius is going to be trying to steal away Ooh. some Raptors here as well. Very cheeky work as Ziv's going to teleport. Where did he Didn't go? It, did not expect he this. to the dragon very early on. Of course, Mountain is on the wreck side. She's able to solo out the dragon very quickly. But now with a couple of buddies as well, it's going to be far faster than that. And AHQ looking to really get an early lead in the dragons. And this is what AHQ love to do. They snowball from dragons. They yep. fight around every dragon. And now they've got one very early on. Right. They start the chain of looking towards the fifth dragon very early on here, only at four minutes. And once again, another game. Yes, yesterday, I really like their early game plan here from HQ. And uh, talking about expected behavior, they immediately leave that top side of the map, send Maokai down to the bottom side. So as TSM move up with the jungler and top lane to the top side, there's no opportunity for a dive. No death there from HQ. Right. They come away with the early dragon, and they'll have the timer on it. Uh, TSM completely in the dark on that one, and it'll be hard for them to position early uh, to try and stop what HQ usually like to do. You, you can kind of see the story that Image told of the early dragon for HQ being able to pressure, but mid game from Team Solo Mid being able to get the bigger objectives, that Baron. See if the game plays out that same way. So far, AHQ, like I said, putting the first thing on the plate for TSM to think about. And both have kind of just shared top and bottom side of the jungle here for the first part of the game. Yeah, and it's interesting as well because it looks like they're now going to switch. AHQ's going to switch that bottom lane towards mm -hmm. the top side of the map. Dragon no longer an objective, but that might give Dyrus some time here because there's no one else on the bottom side of the map. Yep. Any time you can buy for uh, Dyrus with a minion wave closer to his turret is time well spent. Uh, looks like he is going to clear the minions out very quickly, though, uh, as Anne comes. So the lane will be pushed up back towards AHQ. And the other thing, too, is uh, in the lane swaps, uh, with everybody, pretty much everybody, abandoning the Rod of Ages build for Maokai, um, you know, not really needing that extra mm -hmm. ability power later in the game at all, just wanting to go for the much smoother curve, much smoother power for Maokai of building pure tank stats, trying to go for the uh, Righteous Glory very early on. Maokai, more effective on less gold. Hecarim really does want to work towards the 24th as quickly as possible, get his home guard upgrades as quickly as, po quickly as possible. And they're making it hard for Darius. Once again, he has the lane shoved, has to get chased out. He won't even get experience. Goes back to Wards, but he uh -oh. is zonard out here. He's going to get popped up. Dyrus does not have Flash. He is oh, going to go down God. for first blood. And they have been down there quite a bit, guys. It finally pays off. Yeah, beautiful play there as well. And Albus wasn't letting that horse go anywhere. <laughs> that was the kill pressure of the Rek'Sai plus Nautilus that we talked about in a two versus two. But it, it was didn't even look like it was fair there. Yeah. Dyrus, he keeps shoving these lanes and extending and then kind of waffling around in no man's land territory and getting picked up for the first blood. Once again, Iris down. And TSM will have to keep their cool this time because yesterday, towards the end of the day, with Dyrus dying early, it kind of set off the rest of TSM to make some really awkward moves as well. And he makes the right choice here as well. Does not go back down to that bottom lane. He, you could just see Mountain waiting for him, ready to pick him off as soon as he comes back. And it would have been even worse if he burned the teleport to do so. To the camps in the jungle for Dyrus to stay safe. All right, so he won't die, uh, but the turret probably should right. be answered here. And is trying to get his uh, the minions grouped up so that he can uh, have the wave shoving back towards him. Side wave control. Uh, definitely HQ having an advantage in that aspect of the game so far. Darius just eating some minions there in the mid lane as well. He has a healthy CS advantage, continuing the trend of massive 
CS lead so far at MSI. He's been brilliant in that department. We'll see whether he can get a little bit more pressure for his team, though. Maybe move around the map. But Choga, not necessarily a known rumor. Yeah, let's let's touch on that stat one more time because he. We mentioned that yes, he has the highest. Bjergsen has the highest CS differential at ten. Nineteen, but not how big it is. Nineteen. He has that 10 advantage. And the next closest is Marin, who has a little bit over 10. Right. So Bjergsen about 19 just there. And, and you, it's you, only some, eight you, can, you can sometimes figure 20 CS is a kill, right? So Bjergsen's in lane just kind of sitting with kill cash. His, <laughs> his one versus one is outstanding. And yeah, even absolutely. Baker, Baker in the interview that he did after yesterday uh, complimented Bjergsen on the, you know, the skill shot actually, his laning phase. Um, but said that he was vulnerable to mm -hmm. jungle pressure. And on a melee champion like Cho'Gath, obviously constantly shoving, you will be a little bit more vulnerable. Well, Turtle finally getting a little pressure on the lane. Those AD carries across the map are even. Stiv stays safe with a nice twisted advance back into uh, under the turret. Mountain now coming down, gonna get some crab control. Already a minute on that next dragon, and he dodges out on the ghost nicely. Ooh, the excellent landing, a nice rupture there as Westor. Just have to be a little bit careful. Ooh. He is the tricksy fizz, though, so he, should, so he should be fine. Albus looking for something here on the top side. Darius is getting a whole lot of attention this tournament as Westor's making his way up as well. Yeah, TSM keeps shifting Darius into an area to succeed, though. Large minion waves, they moved him up there. Uh, he's trying to get experience. Oh, God, maybe a little bit greedy for the cannon minion. He's oh, got he's level got six. He's level six. <laughs> Peace out. Yeah. So I was on the verge <laughs> of criticizing the ward and saying that almost everybody now wards over that tri bush onto the other side to see people waiting, but well, doesn't got Darren. in trouble. Forced to use the flash to try and escape. Marshall Boys is helping oh. him out here. Uses the rend. There's a flash from Mountain. Though. He'll be able to pick up that kill. Attention on both sides here from HQ. They have their support roam to one side of the map with splitting Mountain down bottom. And Wild Turtle's the one to pay uh, for the downed turret and extending instead. And they get him on the other side. It does look like AHQ could be coming up with a second dragon here. Something TSM's pretty much okay with giving up most of the time. They will let two dragons go to the wayside. AHQ, yeah, they do just focus on the dragon pressure. That is right. what they do. So it's sort of the two opposite mindsets coming through here. TSM saying, we don't really mind about dragons. Yeah. We're just going to take control of the map and make sure that we systematically destroy you. Whereas AHQ is like, we want a completely chaotic game, but we just want to get the dragons, okay? That's all we really mind about. We will gladly take those dragons. Thank you. <laughs> and yeah. they're in the perfect position to chain them as well. They even have the global gold lead and map pressure from taking down the extra turret. Turret lead here for AHU. They still have their bottom and mid turrets, the ones that you want up around the dragon so they can easily ward the area, gain control of the river, mm -hmm. and push this early game advantage that they have. Pretty much the only thing going for TSM is the CS lead for Bjergsen in the mid lane. And somehow Dyrus has a CS advantage in the top lane as well which is pretty right. remarkable considering the He's fact that he has been He keeps bullied. going back for those camps, making sure he is yeah. keeping himself scaling in this game. If he falls behind, he's one of the big damage factors. They're going to need the flay to dredge line actually gives the upper hand there to Albus, and he may be able to turn around and find a target. Bjergsen's right in the middle of four members of AHQ. A nice ultimate from Santorin gives him some time to think about it, but he still goes down. Tyrus is right in the middle. Everything's used in defense here. His AHQ is still going for the fight. Yeah, defensive ultimate used by Dyrus there as well as the swap came through. It was a little bit trolly there on Westor as he probably <laughs> wanted to try and hit Bjergsen there, but he did fall down and AHQ, they just want these messy fights and they'll get them every single time. The other thing is that, well, yeah, they got him there. I don't know why though, because TSM, well, yeah, look at the AD ridiculous. carry. Turtle is sitting on a vamp scepter while the Urgot has not only the tier that's stacking up, but a brutalizer pickaxe completed. Which is and, ridiculous. Yeah, and they didn't, you could sell that TSM didn't really want to opt into that, but they got a little bit too close um, and they tried to save Bjergsen. Bjergsen was a little bit deep on that one. And the CS lead did not matter for their, the Cho'Gat this time. Um, they focused him down early. Dyrus did end up having to use the teleport. They were trying to hold it and save it there. Um, but the force from AHQ, very good job capitalizing on TSM, getting a little bit too close there, sniffing around their dragon, picking up the kill there and Turtle having to wait for the yep. uh, gold threshold to try and buy a full BF sword. Um, the Urgot, this is, has a much smoother item build where you can, every time you go back, you can pick up little pieces here and he's got, you know, a lot more to work with. Yeah, and also the fact that at exactly that time as well, 
Wild Turtle was sitting on a fair chunk of change, and the buy timings for N were more important. It makes up for the fact that he had to buy that tier. Normally, we're talking about the trough of the tier, but it just wasn't there, because that 700 right. gold was probably in the pocket of Wild Turtle. Right, and, and that sort of discrepancy does not just happen. It's the advantage that HQ have yeah. from getting the early dragon. They know the timer yeah. well in advance. Right. They send everyone back to buy, and they prepare for the fight. Well, and it's not necessarily bad play from TSM. This is fantastic play coming through from AHQ. This is how they play the game. And again, Westall escaping from some trouble. And you right. can already see Team Solo Mid, with the third dragon maybe being in mind, are putting a lot more priority on it already. They know fifth gets a little too scary, and they're not going to let three go to the wayside that easy. But that positioning may have lost them a bit of this mid-turret pressure. They do get back in time, though. The problem that AHQ are going to face, though, is the fact that they have next to no wave clear at all and almost zero siege because there is a lot of melee on that team and an Urgot, who is 350 range. That is nothing. That is quite true. Luckily for them, they have such a good early lead in control of the map that they can get deep wards down and see any rotation that TSM try and make. And with TSM being this far behind, they probably will not make uh, try and shove, make any shoving plays very early uh, to pressure these turrets. And if they do, they'll get chased off. Oh, there's the death, death charge. charge coming through from Albus. He's looking to try and get something happening here. Nice, Lenton. It's going to help the team get up. It's Ziv with the flanking play. Whoa. Bjergsen gets twisted advance. Beautiful oh. dredge line to come through as well as Albus tries to stun him up. Bjergsen's still alive. Though nice rupture on the carries here at the same time as Ant gets death sentence. Taking a fish. Beautiful fades call. Carol oh. and Nyrus re-flanking from the backside. Wild Turtle takes down Ziv's mountain. Trying to get amongst the Wild Turtle. He's going to fall double kill. Already for Ant, but can they get any more mountain? He's going to get caught up. It's another beautiful kill, but triple for Ant. And the Urgot is making plays. That's why you don't try and make the hard pushing rotational base plays when you don't have any vision, any sort of map control. HQ, with so much vision, they're easily able to collapse and corner TSM and grab the fight. Take, while it was only a two for one, they do take advantage and they've now yep. got control. Three for then one. Shove in, oh, three for one. To then shove in on the turret. So Westor here. Able to get some damage done as well. Just extending that gold lead. And like you said, without any vision, yeah, they have power in numbers. But if you don't know where the other team is coming from, you're absolutely in the dark. So yeah. Bjergsen takes so much damage at the start of that fight. And Westor having to flash in here. Love uh, that. Yeah, the Fates Call trying to get rid of the focus there. At this point, trading tank for tank, uh, Turtle really takes that too far. And he's on the front lines there. So. Bit of, of a misposition, actually, that caused this kind of to snowball in HQ's favor, actually. Ziv really preventing anything from happening off Dyrus's alt. He gets four people. Ziv was just toying with four people on the other side. Nobody could follow up on that. Yeah, and that was, once again, uh, Wild Turtle getting a little bit zoned out of the way of his lantern that he was trying to pick up out of yeah. the river there, but he just couldn't quite make it there in time. He, he pushed up a little bit really far after they got the first kill. Uh, wasn't quite aware that Dyrus had gone down and it was actually a one-for-one -one trade with both of the top lane tanks going down. But he's going to try and continue farming this one up. This is a very, it's a different experience though for TSM. This isn't the shutout that they were experiencing last night with SKT as well. Like, it's not that same situation. They do now have the opportunity to try and consolidate because their team comp scales incredibly well into the later stages of the game. They've just got to try and consolidate, hold on. And it's a team comp that they like. The only change versus SKT was Ziggs in the middle. This is the exact same thing. But with Cho'Gath, they like to run this comp. They feel comfortable with it, but can't seem to find the ends in that early game with it. Yeah, it's going to be very difficult for them. And AHQ, from their perspective, mm -hmm. uh, they've got Westor out of the early stages of, of Fizz gameplay, which you yeah, expect Fizz absolutely. to have the CS disadvantage early on yeah. like that. And it wasn't a very big disadvantage. So once again, the Westor Fizz pick going to start to shine. He can split push oh, the side lane. Oh, all right. that's not, not going to shine right work. now. Need a few more of those. He's going to miss, <laughs> miss this one. But this is the time in the game. Uh oh. Oh, Ziv, though. Devastating charge. He's going to get Darius to safety now, but that Flash is an twisted. angry tree. Nope. Yeah, didn't want it. Already used the Righteous Glory. Didn't want to follow in. Third Dragon now as TSM oh. is scattered around the map. Not even a chance to respond here. Six to one, 18 minutes in. Three to zero in Dragons. And not only is Westar going to start to shine on this Fizz, who's becoming extremely powerful, but Anne has already upgraded his Brutalizer all the way to the Ghost what? Blades just for the extra 10 armor penetration. 
The extra attack speed and, and move speed. Yeah, <laughs> all right, that's pretty cool, active. But mainly it's about flat penetration because look at the tank line for the uh, for TSM. They won't build armor anytime soon. Dyrus only that's has true. a cloth armor. Gragas right now, full health for the Sightstone Cinderhulk. And you know that Hecarim wants to build that Trinity Force. So that's the direction Darius is going to go soon. Flat penetration, extremely valuable here because almost nobody has any armor. And this Urgot, they're really pushing the mid game of this Urgot and they're going to try and bully TSM. And I really like that adaption as well because normally it's the Black Cleaver that you go for. This is not. This is before the change, of course, where it still is building out of that Brutalizer. That is normally the option for an Urgot, but Anne's saying, no, 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 just need to pierce the armor. We're going to get through it. Yeah. Yeah. Try and get close to that true damage. Now all that he needs is uh, to transform to the Muramana, and he will be get able to free shot people. It does want to get a little bit more of that cooldown reduction as well. Once that sweet spot of the 37.5, make sure you can get four <laughs> of those acid hunters off. That well, one's for Puff's the thing is, he only, I think he only needs three to hit to actually kill someone. So. <laughs> well, that's true. You could go for the armor penetration where cooldown reduction doesn't matter because you just kill people. Looking at the Urgot in general, the beginning of this game, we thought it would be something TSM would try to take away for themselves. But the Callista again, was something they wanted. And now that Urgot is definitely paying dividends for AHQ. Westor uh, trying to go solo here in the top lane. Santorin, a little too big in the belly area. The waistline doesn't allow Fizz for the full hug there. And he's going to have to get out of this. What is the team doing besides, though? You can see all four members of AHQ in the bottom lane having a field day. Yeah, that was remarkable from Westor to make yeah. it out of that one. I thought he was almost definitely dead, but... After the flash body slam, there just wasn't enough left to yeah. hold him down. Westor is another one of these guys running the per level cooldown reduction rune yep. for glyphs instead of magic resist. And with the Athenes that he likes to rush on Fizz, he's already up to 32.5% cooldown reduction just with that. So he can playful trickster immediately again. And But he has no he doesn't even have boots one yet. It's just, just crazy. Nope. He's a fish. <laughs> Come on. Uh, he wasn't in the river, though. Theoretically, he should be slower. This is true. This is true. Have you ever 20. tried to walk in Flipper's Rift on, <laughs> on the head? <laughs> so difficult. Running in Flipper's, though, that actually works surprisingly well. Does it? Yeah. Pogo stick on Flipper's. Yeah, it's ah, weird. You I went up you. So long. All right, I'm going to stop you right there. <laughs> it's 20 minutes into idea. this one. Getting six to the one. Challenge. The 6,000 gold lead. And still three turrets now in favor of AHQ as they decide where they want to go next, really causing TSM to be uh, to go to the beat of their own drum. Westort now to the top lane again, looking to spread TSM thin. It took two members to push him off a turret last time, and it's only going to be Bjergsen this time. Yeah, that's the thing. HQ, their path to victory is so clear. Since they got the early dragon, started stacking at four something minutes, all they have to do is keep the pressure, keep TSM bottled up in their side of the map, which they're doing very well, and continue to take the dragons. Uh, Westort here. Going to go one versus one with Bjergsen, and one of them's got backup. Yeah, Albus and Mountain both make their way in, and Bjergsen was not going anywhere. Darius, meanwhile, in the bottom lane again, having a lot He's of up. trouble Ooh. here against Ziv, who may actually flash this on. Beautiful Arcane Smash. Oh! oh Ziv all the way oh, down, dead. and another oh. one. Ziv thinks he's got him cornered, but Darius again on another journey around the map. We'll see whether he's going to be able to make it out this time, of course. <laughs> Just heads through the turret. Is the sapling going to be enough? It won't. Oh, the oh, other game smash oh, after man. the flash. Some of the That's coolest the interactions this weekend. <laughs> yeah. the, the timing to pull that off is so hard. Oh, it yeah. brings up the question if if he actually got it off on purpose. I'm going to give it to him. That was credit, yeah. You're credit for Ziv. That was oh, beautiful. Yeah. Great Absolutely. timing on the Hecarim ult right there. Well. That's definitely going to be playing on the mind of Dyrus. Nothing seems to be working out for oh. him in that lane. 0 3 0 for him. 0 3 1 for Bjergsen. These picks have not flourished in the mid game as AHQ just continues to hold control, not even take control. They've had it since the early part of this that game. That is just so disheartening. When yeah, the Maokai, absolutely. split push Maokai solos your split push Hecarim, the other team, when Westor is on Fizz, able to split push as well, they've got. TSM has to defensively ward. They can only ward their own side of the jungle at this point. Maokai so, fell to the wayside because Hecarim did more damage. That's not supposed to happen. <laughs> well, the exactly. thing that's strange here as well is the fact that Ziv is known as a team fighting tank player for, for AHQ. Generally, he falls behind in his lane. He's known not to necessarily get leads in the 1v1, but this time he's managed to get that yeah. a lead gently in gold because of his score being a little bit better. And he's running with it. Now has got that CS advantage back when 
Darius was running around picking up the camps like we were talking about. We commended him on this, but still getting 1v1 by the Zip. Uh-oh, Westor uh, moving around mid, getting a little flank of his own. It's only three people defending, though. And Darius once again taking a large chunk of damage in the exchange. He's still able to clear out the minions, though, so he's going to be okay. Ziv just trying to stop him from wanting to stay around in the lane, but he does have the wave clear. All right, well, let's look for hope for TSM. They have... Well, oh, oh. Uh, that's, that is not a good start. That was a beautiful scrying off. There's a teleport for HQ as well as the fish comes through. Bjergsen, oh, the three-man knockup coming down from... The Rex side at the same time as Med TSM are melting on this one. Wild Total fall down, falls down first. Bjergsen as well. Oh, Everyone's picking up kills and the switch comes in. Dyrus thinks he was getting a flank, but that's just entering the cave of doom here for TSM and AHQ. This is the fourth dragon. They are playing out of their minds. That was so, so well played here from AHQ. This game, they that's have. Scrying or they have had oh, it man. and man. The one thing that TSM can hope for, setting up for the Dragon way early, trying to get a miraculous home guard teleport their own pick ward. And it goes as horribly as it could possibly go. HQ, snipe them, kill everyone, take the Baron. They won't have to wait for the fifth Dragon. HQ looks like they're running their way straight past the group Look stage. And that. something like this is only set up in steps. Because Where's HQ has Dyer all that help. vision around the map, it also tells them where TSM isn't. And the one scrying orb hit finds the entire team. Uh, so actually, I'm mean, even dock some points from TSM here. They didn't have Dyrus waiting in the fountain with the home guard right, ready. He was out. So even, yeah, even, they had him clearing a wave. I mean, if you're going to make an all-in play like this, you bet everything on it. You kind of let that wave crash, and you hope that the home guard will be enough to catch somebody off guard. But as we see, it's just a massacre yeah. here. AHQ are dominating. And they transition it perfectly into their fourth dragon at the same time, then move over to the Baron. They've got a 13,000 gold lead, and they're going to take down the last remaining inner turret from this map as well. Six to one in favor of AHQ. TSM really needing this game to get out of that bracket stage. This would make AHQ 3-1 and one and TSM 1-3 and three at the end of this game, something they were trying to avoid after quite a disheartening day yesterday. They picked their heads back up and tried to hit it with almost the same composition, but AHQ was reading it like a book. Yeah, TSM looking to go aggressive, though, as Westall was in the bottom lane mountain as well towards the top side. Bjergsen, though, they're trying to turn around. AHQ with a whole bunch of damage. Last boy. Oh, the beautiful Fates call once more, but Anders has so much damage. Bjergsen going to fall down. Dyrus ulting his way out, but AHQ might just transition this into either a turret or they'll just go dive heavily for the kills. Last boy going to fall down. And AHQ in the base should be able to get pretty much everything they want since Westor also already shoving in. Top turret here. This may be the end. This is just a shutout from AHQ. 14 to 1 now in yeah. kills. They're taking multiple structures at a time. Turret falls, inhibitor falls. The top lane inhibitor going to go down as well. Dyrus trying to push out the bottom lane because he's not going to be able to stand up this against is... this four-man force. And Westor is still heading up the heading up the top lane, just wanting to go back, pick up some more items. Might be able to get a Lich Rain now as well. His fizz is so scary. It's such incredible play. They're looking, if they didn't leave the base, to match the fastest games this week already. Put yeah. down on day one, just around 26, 20 to 35. And, wow. I don't think this is necessarily TSM playing poorly, though. I think this is just HQ's playstyle working fantastically yeah. against the likes of TSM who want to have control, but HQ just play in chaos. And these types of things keep ticking against you. You're losing the top laner. You're losing just members in oh, general like that. when you want them to be back, when you're trying to just get some wave clear so you have some room to breathe, but nothing is playing in their favor right now in HQ is doing a fantastic job. West Door 0, 0, and 9. And it's 7, <laughs> 0, and 2. Yeah, so Westor is the most famous player on the team, but I've been ridiculously impressed with Mountain. Yeah. All bracket stage long, or all group stage, all whatever we're calling it. <laughs> Round Let's Robin. Group stage. Long. Work. Mountain has been great, but also Anne is a huge carry for this team as well. And he's shown it on this Urgot. He went Woo! aggressive early build. Rushing that armor penetration, and he's racked up the kills to back it up. 
He plays well, got a uh, pentakill in the second game against TPA and knows how to perform on that stage. And once again, doing again with the rest of his team. The communication has been on all game. 15 to one is the score as AHQ enters Team Solo mid space. And they're taking whatever they want here as well as Mountain. He does get explosive casting into the team, but that's not the member that they want. And though, he might be what they're looking for. Osiris tries to get some work done. Uh -oh. Nice swap from Ann, gives him so much resistances. Tanks up the turret, Ziv so tanky as well, but getting Death Sentence back. Twisted Advance saves his life. Three inhibitors down, Ziv flashes away. And AHQ say, yep, uh, we'll just leave now because we feel like we may have hurt ourselves a little uh -oh. bit. Nice Death Sentence from Lost Boy, the shutdown on Ann. TSM looking to try and get back in on this one, but Ziv picks up the kill onto Kalista. Dyer is gonna fall down, Westor. He's twi he's oh. playful trickstering around this fight. Bjergsen able to get the knock up, but another urchin strike gets Westor and he's tanking up the turret, but trickstering around and Santorin, the last man standing that's around this fountain and man. AHQ, they don't care that their carry falls down or their tank, they're still gonna win this game. 19 to 3. This LMS team is showing up for MSI. Absolutely. 3 and 1 now as AHQ take down Team Solo mid. 29 minutes on the clock. What a dominating performance here from AHQ. Smiles to boot as well. They should be very proud of that performance. Man. That side of the world is showing some domination today. It certainly is, and Westor just knows how to play on the international stage as well. You saw, we were talking before, domestically, HQ didn't look that strong heading in here. They weren't necessarily the favorites to win their tournaments, but you get Westor onto an international stage, he seems to just give something to the rest of his team, and they play out of their minds. Yeah. Definitely look like they're playing without nerves, any of oh, these yeah. guys, the new ones to the stage or the old. Well, we all know Westor definitely wants to get back to that game where he can get up against Pawn, somebody who shut him down last year at Worlds. And I know he'd love to do so. Oh, oh man. They're kind of <laughs> the Fizz player themselves ready Versus. for that. Yeah, absolutely. That Fizz matchup. Only one will be able to play it. And I just can't believe he's managed to just last pick Fizz into matchups that we weren't expecting him to make work. Oh, it's crazy. Making it happen throughout the week. We'll see how they can carry on. For right now, we are going to head it over to our crack team of analysts for 